Hey guys, Elite A Legionaria here, and today I have a 2 vs 2 for you for Napoleon Total War. This is on the Syrian Ridge map. Um, it was myself and VOD member Vlad, uh, who's one of the best medieval 2 players around, but I managed to get him to play a bit of NTW. And there our opponents are there on the left as the attacking team. Uh, seeing as we're on the Syrian Ridge, I thought I'd give it... Um, Give, a, give the Ottoman Empire a bit of a bit of a go. Um, I always find the Ottomans to be a lot of fun, a great faction to use, but kind of specific in their use. Uh, very good, of course, with the melee rush and the heavy cav, um, but not always as easy to use. But I've gone with what's usually considered a fairly typical build for the Ottomans, I think, from what I've sort of understood. I mean, I'm not a pro at Napoleon by any stretch, but I think I'm decent. Um, my build consists of four units of Nazim e Kadit Light Infantry, five units of Nazim e Kadit Infantry, I believe it, it was three units of Semat Janissaries with about two upgrades each, one unit of Vashi Bazooks with a couple upgrades, grades rather, and then four Silatar Guard and two Mountain Nazim uh, e Kadit Rifles, uh, which are basically like Light Dragoons essentially, and then just a regular general's bodyguard. Uh, Vlad is playing as Prussia. He's got looks, looks he's got some life hussars, some cuirassier, uh, Lutzel's Fry Corps, which is uh, one of the DLC units. I think that's a sort of a sword cavalry. Looks pretty cool, actually. Um, and then we have another cuirassier. Of course, the Prussian cuirassier are kind of a bit misleading because, although it's historical, from what I understand, the Prussians really didn't wear a cuirass on the battlefield, so... Um, kind of interesting, but they still come to that classification, I suppose, that kind of heavy type of cavalry. Um, the rest of his forces consist of, uh, looks like, five units of Silesian shoots. And, um, I wouldn't recommend this many uh, rifles. These are rifles. The Prussian Fusiliers are much better, but these guys are extremely accurate. Um, but, of course, they are only 60, range me uh, 60 men in the unit, so you do have to try and use that range advantage to your edge. He's also got a 12 pounder foot artillery, and his line consists of, looks like, uh, five units of musketeers, one eighth life regiment, one east Prussian grenadier battalion, and of course all that cavalry went out to the flank. Again, grenadier units, as you can see, only 90 men in the unit, 30 men less, so. I mean, the grenades certainly can be very helpful, but they're quite hard to get into use. And I find in a gunfight, they usually get beaten up just because they... Not because they're good, bad shooters, because they're good shooters, but because they've got 30 men less. Which, unfortunately, means grenadiers are never as useful as I think they should be, because they were very, very good units in real life. Um, our opponents are both playing as the French. So we have this opponent over here. We have, let's see, uh, a pretty typical thing for the French. We have a mixture of young guards... Um, yeah, or guard type units. I think it's three young guards, a guard seaman. Then he's got his line infantry here, which are three Polish legion. He's got a young guard and a Swiss foot here. Then he's got some voltagier here, two more voltagier here. And I think he might have something else somewhere else as well. His general is a general staff. His cavalry consists of two chasseurs a, a cheval. And here he's got, let's see. Another Shashra Cheval and two Shash uh, a Shashir and a Voltagier and a couple of a Swiss foot and a Polish Legion here. So this is this guy's army. I think he might have some more cavalry over here too, I'm not sure. Uh, then the other French player has got let's see, he's got a twelve pounder foot artillery here. Looks like he's got a normal general staff, he's got an old guard there, got some Voltagier here, another old guard, a Polish Legion, old guard, so three old guard all up. And the rest of Polish Legion is Swiss foot. Don't see any cavalry. Um, so we initially pushed up trying to get the high ground, um, which is generally, I think, a reasonable idea on the Syrian Ridge map. But having said that, there is a bit of a problem with this. Sometimes I think it's actually a better idea to seize the forested areas around here um, because there's not a lot of room up on the ridge here. Um, it depends. If you've got some really elite uh, light infantry supported by some strong guards or something, I think that would be a great position. But sometimes you don't have enough room and then you can't get your numbers down, so it can sometimes be a disadvantage. Um, up on this side, uh, looks like... Yeah, this guy's put some stakes down, probably just trying to cordon this area off because he's got a lot of cavalry out here. Um, 
So obviously my build's very sort of rush centric. Um, my line infantry and light infantry are crap, really. Well, not crap, but they're not good. Um, they're not they're not really a match for France, even though front they, like French line and light is, is decent. It's not great. Their guards are awesome. Um, their cavalry is awesome. And their, li their line infantry is actually decent too. Um, but their lights, the, the voltages are tough, but they're not great shooters or anything. Um, but I think Prussia and um, the Ottomans would be a great combo because Prussia is very good skirmish wise, it's decent cavalry wise, good line, good guard. It's, it's a well rounded faction all round. Um, and that makes it a good choice uh, to work in tandem with me. So Vlad is under uh, attack here from some of these artillery, as you can see. Uh, he's still bringing his own artillery up. So yeah, he's under attack by this unit of experimental howitzers. Howitzers are actually really useful uh, in that they can um, do a lot of, you know, that whole bar barrage onto the top of the enemy unit makes them very good against infantry, much better than round shot artillery if you ask me. Uh, but at this early stage of the battle, uh, we were just moving forward to get some bit, some skirmishy positions. Um, Vlad's going to push up into these wood, wooded areas, this is good for Vlad because in the woods he does better, he'll do better in the woods here. But as you can see, he's some some more barrages here. I'm, I'm not sure what type of shot that is. I think that might be not the regular kind of shot. Um, but I forget. I've not really used an experimental howitzer in a long time. I don't like their short range. Um, I always try to get a balance of range and firepower and, and movement, basically. It depends on what I'm going for. If I were facing an Ottoman player, for instance, I'd probably bring a um, some port six pounder horse artillery because it's highly likely I'll be facing horses, and I find that um, round shot horse artillery types are good against taking out other horses. Because round shot's good against horses, at least in the NTW. Um, but at this stage, we're, we're going to keep pushing up. Now, I noticed earlier on in this battle that this guy over here was very static. He didn't appear to want to move from his position, so I was thinking maybe there's just maybe an opportunity here to gang up on this guy and try and knock him out and work as a team here. So I've set up a little front here, over here, and then I've sent my two gun cab around here. Try to slip it around the lines here and maybe draw off some of these Shasha, a cheval, and allow Vlad to get a breakthrough up here. But then again, breaking through up here is probably not logical because we got, you know, four guard units up here. So this is actually a really strong flank. Um, so Vlad should probably commit really strongly to this flank um, and leave a small token force here and I'll support him. Because this French player has actually set himself up very well defensively. Um, but then again, France is a very aggressive faction. It's best employed aggressively anyway. There's more artillery shots coming in there. But overall, France is best employed in the attack, to be honest. But you don't really want to be attacking two players. So over here, my guys start opening up. But the terrain is not the best, admittedly. Um, you always got to watch this, eh? You, I'm always looking for this in the battle. I mean, battles because you don't want your terrain being kind of crappy. But I mean, even for this guy, he's just got a few little shots through there. So the terrain is really not ideal for this sort of thing. And again, there's lots of little breaks in the terrain. But I was, I left a reasonably strong force at the moment, just in case this guy was to swing inwards. But he's not doing so, so it's not so bad. Vlad has moved up just to the edge of the forest and he's going to open up with his Slesian shot. So these guys have got very high accuracy, but are very expensive, obviously. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really recommend rifle type units in big numbers, maybe one or two. The only time I'd bring rifles and expensive rifles over light foot um, would be in a, on a map like, say, Dresden or uh, Ligny or something like that, Lodi, something that's got um, a bit of a bit of um, rivers and things and it's you, the range really counts for it there because as you can see here he's getting in a shoot at, shoot out with these voltagier um, and, and yeah he'll beat those voltagier his guys are better but these guys are very expensive and so he can't afford to lose them to a much cheaper voltagier too quickly you know so uh, Prussian fusiliers would outclass voltagiers and be cheaper and you'd have more men so you know it's always a matter of those kind of cost effectiveness things um, and, and again, these units I think are better employed on, on bridge type maps and rivers and areas where range is very, very important um, because otherwise, you know, the numbers are bit, usually speaking in, in a straight out shoot, the light foot types always win because they've got 30 more men and it's just the sheer firepower that overdoes it rather than long range and accuracy. So you need to do quite a lot of micro with these rifles.
five units to get the best out of him. Um, and I'm not saying it can't work, but I just think it gives you more work. Um, and as a result, when you've got more work on the battlefield, you make more mistakes, I think. Unless you're a very good micromanager, of course. And, and Vlad is a good micromanager. That is, you know, something he's definitely better than me in that area. Um, some nice artillery shots coming in here. Good. And we get some nice close range shots here. And he is definitely having an effect. These guys dropped down by 40 men, so definitely working nicely. Um, over on the flank, um, it's kind of, he's pulled back a bit here, but as you can see, um, the French player is going to push this flank, and this is a typical trait from the French, they'll push with their guards, because those French guards are excellent. Um, Vlad sees his attack coming in as Grenadier here by these Chasseur Cheval, uh, he forms the squares, just in time, um, and you know, the French player knows he can't stay in that, but he did get a volley off, and this unit has dropped by 30, and as I said, losing Grenadier is not so great. I see this as potentially a risk, so I bring up some of my light, my, my, my gun cap to support, but uh, as you can see, Vlad had it reinforced anyway. But the advantage of what's going on here is my ally and myself, um, or Vlad and myself, are working much better because this guy over here is not supporting, um, which is great for us. So I decide to advance up my rifles here because I don't have the same kind of range. But my guys over here do seem to have range, so we're getting pop shots in on this unit over here. And Vlad's able to use his extra long range here. If I'd been the French player, I would have pushed the centre more here. Um, I think he's strong enough to push the centre, to be honest. But uh, he doesn't anyway. But now I get my rifles forward in their much larger numbers. Um, and these guys will, you know do more, a bit of damage, but again, Ottoman Light Infantry is really not a speciality for them, so they they will probably, well they they are outclassed by Chasseur and Voltagier, um, for the most part they are anyway, but uh, it should be able to help, you know, because Vlad's got his hands full over here, um, so here we see a nice move by the French, he brings up his Chasseur, um, a Cheval, but Vlad was covering, so the Lutzhaus Fry Corps come in, the Carassier come in, and we have a nice cavalry battle engaging over here. Um, both are sort of sword cavalry, but Chasseur and Cheval are very, very good at both gun fighting and swords fighting. Um, so this results in a um, very close match up here, but I mean, there are heavier cab for the Prussians though, so the Carassier should eventually, over time, take it out, but then again, we have the French guards coming in and absolutely mowing them down here. And to be honest, the loss of all these, these Prussian cab would be pretty disastrous. I decide to bring over my, my gun cab to reinforce Vlad over here, just in case. Um, but these guards are certainly having their way on the side. As you can see, this unit of 8th life regiments gets chopped down pretty quickly. Um, but we're able to resist those, those French cavalry there. Um, but, as you can see, uh, Vlad's going to try and get through, um, try and attack here, but then again, he, in comes some more Chasseau Cheval as reserves. Good move by the French player. He gets in, gives him time to get into squares with the young guard, um, and this is going to be pretty devastating on Vlad's cavalry. Vlad does make a nice positioning move here with him, some of these guys, so he's got some nice shots in on this Polish Legion and some of these Chasseau Cheval over here. But as you can see, the Prussian cab is uh, being pushed back there. I, I wanted to support, but I knew I couldn't because all these guards were blocking me here, so he knew that too, and he stopped. But I see that things were being a bit rough on that flank, so what I decide to do is start... I notice this player is still not supporting, so I'm pushing up aggressively on this side, and I'm going to really put the pressure down here in the centre, um, and give Vlad that time he needs. So I'm having a bit of a skirmish duel with my opponent here. Again, as I said, my, my Ottomans are a bit outclassed in this department. But I see, I wait for my opponent to do his shots, and then I make my charge. Now, I know I'm going to lose some, some cavalry here. Um, but I'm going to get more than half of my men into this group. And the first wave will take the most. Then I can bring in the others. But as you can see, I managed to get them completely into these guys. And Ottoman cav is superb cavalry. It's the, them and their C-match are easily their best assets. And now I decide to just mow up his line here. Um, as you can see, because of course chaos and disruption here, I'm able to get these guys straight up through here. Now I'm going to go for these guys because I don't want them to, I want to start getting my Semat Janissaries forward and all just to make sure they don't get shot at, I'm using my cavalry to make sure these guys are not shooting me. 
Um, but as you can see, these guys were still disrupted, so I'm able to get these guys in basically unopposed. Um, and I'm able to go straight up the center of his line here. Um, getting into his lights here, and as you can see, I'm able to get my heavy melee infantry in and carry behind, that'll, that'll route those young guards very quickly. As you can see, guards you know, straight away routed. There's fire coming down from me and from Vlad in the center, and now I'm going to use my cavalry to, to, and my line of tree to roll up the center here. Um, so, yeah, I, here we see the French player on this side trying to support, so I left one of my cavalry units to to work as a guard over here, and I'm going to bring it in and block it out, and then I'm going to get into position to shoot him out here. I've also left uh, some Bashi bazooks over this way, if I remember here they are here, so I'll try to get some melee. Um, now, his line infantry is going to be better than mine, so I've got to try and use my guard, my cavalry here to try and support this. Up through the centre over here, I'm continuing the push, um, and he's gone into square, but that's good for my um, my sword infantry, which should be able to destroy them in square, and I can keep going after his, uh, his line infantry with my cavalry units, which as you can see are still pushing up the centre here. Um, Vlad has now managed to fight it to a stalemate. I still have my cab over here, my gun cab, although I've kind of been busy microing on these two sides of the field, so I've kind of forgotten about that. Um, using my cab still, and I managed to route one of his line, um, his Polish Legion here. Um, over here, as you can see, he melee rushes one of my light infantry with his guys. Good move, um, because obviously my light infantry will get smoked, but or get wasted, but um, it gives my, me time to get my Bashi Bazooks in here. And the good thing is I get a bit of a bonus on a map like this because it's deserty. Now, I've still got these guys in a bit of a melee with my cab, but they do get chopped down there. Um, but the effect is good. We've, I've been able to crush the center of my of Vlad's opponent's army, and that leaves Vlad enough strength to take down these guards, I think, in the center on his own because he's still got enough infantry to do it. Um, I, I think that's the reason... This has gone in our favour so far. Is basically the fault of this guy here. He didn't support his ally very quickly, and, and that is always not a good thing to do. Over this side, um, I actually managed to get these guys to uh, fall back, probably because the Bashi bazooks were coming in. He knows Bashi bazooks are good at melee. Um, over here, um, as you can see, I'm starting to form up my line infantry as best as I can. Um, Try not to get them into a position where they're in crossfire. But over here, um, it's going well because as you can see, I still have my mounted rifles and some of my Silatar guard, which I'm bringing in here to mop up some of these routers. And then, as you can see, I'm getting my my Jana series to come into the flanks of these guys over here, which allows me to focus on this group over here. Um, and I'm going to get a few shots down into these guys, but then I'll send my Bashi Bazooks in. Actually, I've already sent them in. And as you can see, they make quick work of the Swiss foot, um, and there's a big rout of my opponent's troops over here as well. As you can see, I managed to get some nice shots in. Although, then again, you've always got to look for this, see this line of sight. You know, there's always a potential I could be hitting this ridge. you always got to watch for those kind of things. It's, it's very easy to miss it. I regularly do it. I regularly miss those things. Um, as you can see, I have um, gone to melee again. And um, there's always the risk with CMAT Jan series. Once they start to actually get tired, they much they fight much worse. Um, and that is always something I have to you have to worry about when you play as the the Ottomans. It has been my undoing with them before. But overall, I've got the numbers and the mass there, and that will destroy those Polish legions. So I mean, these Cimats have done a very nice job of rolling up the, the middle flank here. But I, I take my hat off to this French opponent of ours. Uh, he he fought very well. He was fighting two of us. Bear in mind, he fought very well, and I think he probably would have beaten Vlad, Vlad to be honest. He was looking good. Um, Really, it was the mistake of his ally not to support him, which gave me time to come and interfere and save my ally. Um, which, you know, on a team level, um, was good for us, bad for them. But on an individual level, I think he played very, very well. But ultimately, it's always about working as a team. In any 2v2 or 3v3 or 4v4 scenario, um, you must always work as a team. Um, because... Because obviously, you know, it's not one of you on the field. There's more of you on the field than just the one, uh, and and that was, you know, very crucial to our fight. This this strange player was very really static. He sat still, um, probably expecting me to go and fight him in like a one v one scenario, but. I always work as a team if I can. If I see that I can get a quick knockout by working with my ally, I'll take it because it just makes the whole fight a lot easier in the long run.
Um, bit of the stage, as you can see, I'm still shooting, but again, look, a lot of my shots, if we look, you can see see sort of shots hitting along the mound here. You always got to watch for that, eh? Um, I am getting shots in, but not nearly as much as I'd like. And I realise what's going on. I also realise my light foot was behind my guys, therefore shooting my own men. So, you know, lots of little micro areas like that um, certainly don't help yourself. But um, the more you play, the better you get. Um, at this stage, anyway, this, this old guard's in square. Don't know why. There's no cav nearby. Um, and it's only helping me, um, which I'm not complaining about, because this old guard could probably go into melee and take a couple of these guys down easily, because um, they have the scare effect as well, old guard are the best guard unit, and therefore the best sort of infantry unit in the game. Um, so at this stage, um, basically we've busted up this player, mostly, he's got a few little tidbits out in the back, but we're now preparing to basically kind of trap this guy on two sides, I'm going to bring my infantry around here, Vlad's going to bring his guys around here, and I'm just going to bring my cav around here, and my melee is going to come around here. Um, so, managed to get rid of this old guard, fortunately he did not take it out of squares, so therefore we got it. I, was able to, I was able to get rid of it pretty quickly, which is good, because you don't want to face that. Now over here, some French cavalry grouped, and is actually getting at my skirmishes, but uh, these guys are in square here, they should actually be able to kill them now. I didn't actually spot this, I must have been microing elsewhere, because um, I have cavalry here that could have stopped some of my guys getting killed there, so, um, in fact he might have routed that unit, so, good spotting on this guy's part. Um, and he's still got a few units here that could enable him to be a nuisance, um, if we're not careful. Now, at this stage, myself and... I, Vlad probably um, got a bit complacent because we've gotten ourselves into a good position but we then we start making a few sloppy mistakes like this sort of thing here where I'm putting my Nizami Cadet rifles in um, on their own like this trying to get it as artillery and as he's, you know and they're, they're taking unnecessary losses and you know, you, sometimes that happens you know you sort of get yourself into a good position and you might think right it's all good now and you don't play quite as quite as sharply as you were you know um, so you know sometimes it's always a thing to point out you know don't um, don't, don't lead up until you've absolutely, you know, crushed the enemy, basically. Um, so over here, I was trying to get onto the flank, get a few pop shots into the old guard here. And I managed to do so reasonably well with my, uh, with my Nizi Mikadit mounted rifles. But then he goes into squares, and, uh, and I, I muck around too much, really. Uh, I take a few losses. So, yeah, the, at this stage, I think we took some unnecessary losses, because, you know, I, I really should wait to use these guys a bit later on, and wait until we busy these guys up, and then slip around the back and get rid of those artillery there. And, um, it's really just sometimes you do that kind of thing. Over here, I see that this, this player is one of his Voltagers regrouped, and he's got his general here, so I'm putting my Silatar guard in, in the efforts to kill off his general and the remainder of his men, so he cannot interfere. The loss of his general should be pretty good, and we successfully kill him off there, um, which is good, but he does manage to get one of my Silatar guard, which is, was so tired by that point that it routed, but this one's still got 16 men in it. Silatar Guard is considered, I think it actually might be the best heavy cavalry in the game. I'm not entirely sure, but it's considered to be one of the best at least. It might even be the best, I'm not entirely sure. Here we I saw a guard seaman here, uh, so I'm going to pull back, get my cav away, and I'll just use my two light uh, infantry just to try and skirmish with that a bit. Um, and we do need to be careful here because this French player does still have, you know, he's got a couple of old guards, he's got he's got this artillery and if we get close enough he can go into canister shot. Um, and the Polish Legion and, and some lights are there, so, you know, even though we have the numbers, um, he's also got a, you know, this old guard out there. We have to be careful, so I can't advance too much further than this because, as you can see, I'm in canister shot range and I think I might even be still too close to that. Um, uh, I think I'm just far enough back that it's, the damage canister shots inflicting is, is reasonably minimal. Um, but that stops me from being able to effectively advance, so we need to try and do something to get behind him to kill these artillery. So I'm trying to put my cav there. Again, I probably should have waited until we were more in position over here. Yeah, these guys are not really taking losses from that, that canister shot. Not much, anyway. But 
I was trying to get myself into a position to just make a quick strike against them, but again, I, I really should have waited. I make the same mistake here. Uh, I try getting my guys, my melee infantry, into his old guard, but my guys are exhausted at this stage, you have to remember that, and, and we've not done enough to keep this unit preoccupied, so I think mostly myself, we, we kind of made a little bit of a few hasty errors because we got that initial advantage, as you can see, these guys actually start routing. Um, just because this is what happens when you get tired melee infantry. Um, they become very ineffective. Even though they're a great unit, they become very, very ineffective. Um, which is never a good thing. So these old guard will, will definitely beat them up. And as you can see, they automatically route there. So that was not very well done on my part. Um, and that was mostly because towards this later stage of the fight, yeah, I probably was feeling a bit overconfident with the way situation the situation was. So I kind of like to use it as an opportunity to point out that you shouldn't do that, you know, it should avoid it if you can. Now, I decided to get these guys and start making shots at them just to kill off the crew um, with my lights. And my lights are in, uh, in this sort of doctrine here, light of the doctrine, but even so, the cancer shot still ribs, ribs them. So I'm probably going to have to start forcing myself to go back now. Um, but Vlad is um, pushing up here, uh, and I really should have waited for him for some of these attacks. Um, and that was a mistake that, that I made there. Um, what else is there? My lights have been kept busy because of this guard seaman that keeps hanging around the back, but I decided to ignore it and just go back over here, because we don't have many lights over here. Now I noticed there's a unit of old guards coming out here, and I also noticed a unit of Polish legions coming out here. So I'm going to start falling back a little bit, get the woods in here, and see if I can draw these guys forward and take them out individually. Because if I can take them out individually like that, it'll make my life, our, our whole our whole task of taking down these guys a lot easier. A couple of my CMATs regrouped, so I'm going to give them a chance to rest up, uh, get back their strength, their stamina, uh, and then go for an opportunity later on and not be too hasty with them like I was. So over here, now again, another little terrain feature, look at that. My guy's line of sight is actually not all that good here, as you can see. Um, you always got to look for that. Sometimes you just don't see it because you're so busy microing things and you wonder why your troops are not really killing anyone because they've actually got crappy terrain they're faced with. Then again, my opponent has got a similar situation, so really he's not inflicting a lot of damages either. So it kind of works that way. Um, at this stage, as you can see, I'm bringing my lights up from over here. Um, but here, Vlad goes forward to attack here with his musketeers. Again, like me, he probably was getting overconfident at this point. Um, we should have kind of waited to consolidate our strength because you can still, um, you know, stuff things up if you don't keep that pressure on, you know. Um, but you need to work it together so the pressure's on together, you know. And, and Vlad, me and Vlad kind of probably wanted to finish up what we've begun and we kind of didn't concentrate our attack very well there so you always got to watch that always got to watch that but now that we get our numbers down it starts to get a little bit better as you can see um, but even so these um, these French troops are doing a pretty good job out there over here um, as you can see I decided to put a unit over here and a unit here and then break a unit off. So I've got three men facing this old guard because even so, the old guard could easily take these three out really I think. Um, unless I get good angles of concentrated fire. So my guys open up here onto his old guard. Um, and we managed to get a route going up through the centre there. And I'm trying to avoid the melee if possible, but I decide if I can sacrifice this unit for melee, that I can go behind with this unit and just shoot it in the flank. It'll lose this guy for sure, but it doesn't matter, um, uh, because yeah, I believe at this stage, um, Vlad makes a nice move, he puts his general in, and when you put your general into a melee fight like this, it actually helps a lot, because cavalry is also very good against line infantry, and now I've got men behind shooting into the back of these old guards, so that will get rid of one of his best units on the field, which is very, very good. Um, which one of these is his general? I'm not sure. Not sure, but needless to say, we're going to rout that old guard, I think. Actually, no, he manages to route both of our units, and this unit gets routed by the artillery. Um, at this stage, we decide to fall back a bit, and as you can see, I mean, the French tr these French troops did very, very well um, to resist us. So, I mean, had they worked together, this fight would have been much more difficult. I open up a few rounds into this unit over here. Um, this old guard, and, uh, and it's pretty tired now, it's pretty weakened. 
Um, I should get another couple of rounds into it, so I should probably be able to drop it, and I think I sufficiently do enough damage to it that I'm able to uh, route it once and for all. Because I think he's either out of ammunition or he's going for melee. Um, but I'm able to get those final volleys in, and his men are tired. And at this stage, that should effectively allow me... My guys are in bigger numbers, and he just managed to get shot up enough before he get into melee. I wouldn't want that melee because I'd lose it, probably. Even with all my extra men, I'd probably still lose it. This is how much better old guard are in the melee. Um, at this stage, though, we've got some units here that are regrouping. Um, this, old, this guard Siemens are behind us, though, which is a nuisance. Uh, but we've done a pretty good job, and the crew, critical thing was uh, we got enough gunfire down into the artillery crew that... Well, as you know, we didn't scratch that. Um, over here, this is Polish Legion here, I decided to use my light infantry to pin it down and again take it out with this unit over here, which I don't know what they're doing. There we go, they're turning around now. A little bit of desert music there to keep the, to keep the Ottomans happy. Um, so yeah, that, hold these guys down and get some rear shots into them over here while they're pinned. That's basically what I'm going to do here and that should route these Polish Legion um, which, there you go, they're out. But then again, they're out of my lights. But uh, overall, we've still got the numbers, although we probably have been a wee bit careless at the end here, in all honesty. Um, but sometimes that happens when you get off to a good start. It, it can happen. Um, so I'm just moving it to triple speed here, just because it's a little bit of movement going on here, not a whole lot of action. In the back here, we can see that Vlad has now moved up his, uh, his two musketeers to take on this guard seaman. That should be a pretty close fight, actually, but these, he's still got pretty good numbers in both these units, so he should be able to take this guard unit, unit down. Um, and there you go, he manages to do that. So I believe that is all of the other players' units. The other French players' guy has gone at last. Um, now, I think I accidentally had fire at Will off for some reason with this unit, so it wasn't firing here, so I quickly managed to sort that in a moment. Uh, but at this stage, he's, he's only got one old guard... Polish Legion, some light, and then he's got his artillery, but his artillery is not facing the right way, and even if he changes that way, I can turn this unit to face it. So the artillery is more or less neutralised. Um, but yeah, my guys have not opened up fire yet, just because I forgot to turn guard mode on, but I will manage to, not guard mode, I mean fire at will mode on. Um, and I'm just going to push up further here, get my guys a little closer, because I don't actually think I had range. And Vlad's going to come at it from this side. Um, with those two other units, and he's going to put this unit into the gap, I think, and then I open up here, focusing on his old, old guard, I positioned it deliberately that way, because his old guard is the biggest threat to us there, and we can take that down, well, before it manages to get into range, that's really good for us, because then we can have a much easier chance, and these guys open up here, this voltage here is fairly weakened, so it should route very quickly, it's already wavering, um, and these guys are already knocked down, but uh, as you can see, it manages to route them, and now I'm going to be able to move these guys out to the flank of the old guard. So what I'm going to do here, Vlad's going to take, take my place here as a sleazy and shoots him. Uh, and over here, he's got these guys out flanked, which should finally deal with this artillery, all things considered, or all things hopefully going well. Uh, at this stage, the, as you can see, I'm going around the flank. I want to get onto the flank of these old guard, so we can shoot them down, um, because the old guard can be very, very nasty, and it could very easily defeat all our units to be honest because it's an excellent guard so yeah at this stage it's more or less coming to an end we're just sort of wrapping around I bring this guy this unit of Nizim Nizim Kadit infantry around the back um, the old guard comes forward I thought this unit must have been out of ammo because it wasn't firing but then I just noticed it was reloading um, and he actually, as I was repositioning here, and he actually timed his charge very well because he manages to charge when I'm in the middle of a repositioning move. Um, I decide to pull back though. Again, I'm going to let my old, my light infantry take the brunt of the old guard's attack, so I can then shoot it down with the line infantry. Um, he charges forward here. Some of my guys actually route there. Uh, I'll probably lose this light light infantry unit, but it'll hold down the old guard, uh, and then these two units can move into a position to, as you can see take them out of the picture. Um, get onto the flank here, going to open up and he's going to charge me again um, but at this stage I'm going to get some serious hits down on him and even if he pins this unit, this unit will still be getting cross shot and I do believe that old guard actually routes at this stage and then we pull in around the flank here and I think we have killed off both armies at this stage. I think. Ah, here we go. Wait, that guard seaman, I think, came back. So we'll just quickly form up to deal with that. That's what we're going to do. 
as you can see there's the formation orders or at least my formation orders and I think Vlad will be the one who gets the honours and he will be the one to shoot her down and that's basically going to drop that guard seaman uh, and put an end to the fight once and for all. I think he's putting this musketeer into some melee but that guard seaman finally routes and I don't think now there's anything else left I don't think so, yeah. And there you go. So, um, that was a good game. I actually think our opponents played very, very well, particularly the player uh, that got ganged up on by myself and Vlad. Um, had his ally supported him, um, I think we would have possibly even lost this fight. Uh, they made it much too easy for us by not working together, and that was very critical. Um, I was able to get some excellent um, positioning for my cavalry and my Semak Janissary and cause a mass route on that first French army. And that was very, very critical. Um, and of course, Vlad performed very nicely with his line. But towards the end there, I think we got a bit careless just because we got ourselves into a good position and we got a bit careless. As you can see, my Siltar Garb with 105, a Semak Janissary with six, uh, 96. Um, the Bashi Bazooks 84. Some of those line infantry did surprisingly well, actually. Usually it's not the line infantry that's getting kills for the Ottomans. It's usually the cav. This one got 76 Silitar Guard, 73 here. Um, so these cavalry did do a good job. Um, these Janissaries here, 55, but pretty heavy losses. So all round, I did take quite a few losses. But uh, overall, it was a good game, and I think it, it shows superior teamwork by myself and Vlad um, that won the day against opponents who probably had the better troops, to be honest. But needless to say, it was an excellent battle. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon next time.